everyone, this is Victor Baker, guitarist and luthier in New York City, and welcome back to the Guitar Shop blog. This is episode 5, and it's the fourth part of my series, video series on the ergonomically designed archtop project I've been working on. Today I'll take you through some fretwork, some sanding and prep, and on to the final assembly of the instrument. Alright guys, here we go. Uh, first off, Thanks for all the uh, comments I've been getting through some private messages and on here on some of the posts. It seems like people are really enjoying taking a look inside the guitar shop. It's a lot of fun doing this. If you haven't seen some of the uh, earlier videos in the series, uh, I'll post some links below in the descriptions and you can check them out. This video starts out with some fret work. There's some extra steps in this fret job uh, since the neck is fully bound. I start out by gently clamping the neck to a big block on the bench. That creates a solid surface for when I tap the frets in. There's some prep that takes place beforehand to make sure that the, the side of the fret doesn't poke through the binding there. That creates a nice clean look when the fret work is finished. And I just go along there and tap each fret that's been sized into the fingerboard. And this is a process I learned, picked up along the way, along the years. And what I do is I actually use a piece of, a couple pieces of angle iron you see there. And I'll clamp the frets down really hard with this angle iron. And I'll run a bead of glue through the, you know, from the side to glue the frets into place. And, uh, you know, if you do it right, there's not that much cleanup. This clamping and gluing method creates some really clean fretwork. All the frets are very well seated, pretty even, and uh, that definitely helps later on during the setup work when you uh, level the frets out. Here's the finished body on the sanding table. I'll do a combination of machine sanding and hand block sanding. I, uh, I injured my elbow years ago doing all block sanding, so I do a lot of the roughing work with that sanding pad mounted in the drill that you see there. It comes with a couple different attachments. One's more firm, one's, one has a foam pad, and uh, that really helps get the roughing out of the way. And if you do it right, there's not a lot of cross grain scratches you got to fix up. I've found that it really, this method really helps. It's not so much to speed the process up, but it definitely saves your arms. The downdraft table is a huge help too. You know, when you're sanding, there's a lot of dust created, and that that table just sucks it right away from your workpiece and your lungs. I have a pretty small shop too, so having this to contain the dust is a huge help. At this stage of the game, I'm trying to get most of the, you know, larger surface defects out of the body and the neck prior to assembly. I'll try to finish up any uh, larger areas or bigger problems that exist before the neck goes on because it's a lot easier to sand it when it's in two pieces still. Once all the sanding is to where I like it at this stage, I'll put the body up on the bench there and start getting ready to mount the neck on. Here I'm marking off the center lines. The, uh, the neck has to be exactly on center with the body to make sure everything lines up as far as, you know, pickups and the bridge and the bridge and the tailpiece. That also has to be one continuous line. My necks are kind of like a bolt-on neck, the way I uh, manufacture the heel beforehand. It's the only way I could come up with how to tackle these compound angles of this unique body. Um, works great. The, uh, the CNC process really helps keep things accurate. You're usually able to just blend the neck right in to the heel after you glue it into the neck pocket. Each of the components is designed beforehand to fit right into place with each other. 
And if you work carefully, uh, things fall right into place. It's it's a uh, cool process. I did cut that heel block out of the same billet as the neck shaft. So the, uh, the grain structure and the color matches right up. It looks no different than if you would have stacked the heel uh, in a more traditional fashion. Once the neck's glued on, it's time to get the heel cap installed. If you remember before in a previous episode I was contemplating whether to use a piece of ebony or some maple or something. I, I decided to go with ebony and it's a really irregular shape and this I'm using this tape to kind of copy the lines so that I can do some rough cutting on the ebony and get an accurate, a fairly accurate piece to start with before I you know start the hand trimming work after it's glued on. Here's the ebony blank. It's actually uh, the end of a fingerboard from a past project years, <laughs> probably years ago. I have a huge box of this stuff. And uh, I decided to split it in half to create a wider piece that was more suited to the shape of that crazy heel. After I slice it, I just clean up that edge and glue it in a better position to accommodate that shape. It looks uh, indistinguishable. It looks like it's never, never really happened, but it's a neat, neat little trick to get, you know, make use of that extra little piece I have. There, it's being glued together. That piece under it is that ultra high molecular weight plastic I was using in the last video. It's non-stick, and after it, after the glue, glue is cured, I clean up the bottom. And I place that pattern, that tape pattern I made on it, and do some rough cuts on the bandsaw. I had just enough material to ac accommodate that little point at the end. Here it is on the spindle sander, cleaning up the inside edge. And what I'll do is I'll walk over to the guitar, go back and forth, and match that inside edge as best as I can, um, a little bit at a time, until it matches right up there. I'm using that pencil to scribe the shape of the back to the heel cap and I'll glue it to this block and that'll help me make a trim it out on the bandsaw. It's a really irregular piece so gluing it to a block that that will sit flat on the table is the way to go. The, the, the material on the right there is the actual heel cap and the rest is waste. I'll just throw that block away but um, definitely helps get that heel cap, the, the rough shape, uh, you know, mapped out for you. And that's what it looks like after the cut. Those little pencil lines are, are where I tell myself where the fit isn't quite right and I'll go in there and sand that area until it is uh, really, really closely matching that, the profile of the guitar. And I'll do the same on the inside to match the heel, do some rough sanding on the disc, disc sander, whittle away at that material. And then it gets glued into place. There's a lot of overhang sticking out from on the top. And I'll go in there with a scraper and level it down to the to the surface of the back. Ebony scrapes really well with the hand scraper. It's a, it's a very hard material, but it's actually fairly easy to work in some ways and then the final touch is to go in there with some some sanding work with the uh, disc sander and the little spindle sander I did need to go in there with some chisels to clean up some of the areas that I couldn't reach any other way it actually worked great everything's nice and flush and there's the guitar on the bench it's such a nice mile marker when the neck is attached to the body and you finally see a guitar. It's uh, it's a lot of fun doing this project. This is such a unique instrument. I hope you guys have been having some fun tagging along on the pro project through the video series. The next installment has all the stain work and the prep work for the for the paint work. So stick around for that. And thanks for watching.